Thank you. Hello. I'm not a scientist, actually. Uh, I just hate titles like CEO and stuff, so everyone's a scientist at Rodan and Knox Labs. I'm the chief scientist, I guess. <laughs> so I want you guys to meet Hitchbot. This was a robot that was developed by scientists um, in Canada. Uh, so it was a team that uh, developed, made this robot, and it relied on solely the kindness of humans to hitch a ride from one place to another. So its goal was to get across Canada with complete strangers. So it got across Canada fine, went to Germany, 10 days across Germany, went great, and then came to the United States. <laughs> Three days. Uh, from Boston to Philadelphia. <laughs> so ended up decapitated, hands torn off, feet torn off. And, then, and then this machine was not even conscious. Um, it sucks. But so we, we are at this very interesting stage right now where we as humans are creating a new type of consciousness. I'm going to get rid of that, that one sad, sad picture. <laughs> so we're creating this new kind of consciousness, this new digital consciousness that's in a way an extension of ourselves. And this new evolution is being powered, I think, by three verticals, uh, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, and blockchains. Uh, I actually hate the word artificial because it's nothing artificial about it, natural intelligence. Um, so it's very important, it's very vital at that at, at this stage, we infuse this new evolution, this new existence, with as much humanness and kindness as possible so that we may meet as friends and we may meet with trust. I think in order to better understand machine intelligence, we first have to better understand humans. So let's look at why I think it came, uh, uh, we're at this stage. Uh, I like to define these three stages of evolutions that uh, I think humans consciously went through. Uh, first stage is the sense stage. So I like to define this as the period where uh, people were coming out of uh, the caves. They were experiencing lightning for the first time, using their senses to define their environment, to feel it and define it. And, and then I think a second stage of evolution was this era of renaissance, uh, one that's defined by art, creativity, philosophy, feelings, very little logic. And I think now we're at a, our third phase where it's an age, age of reason defined by logic, technology, science, defined by definitions that have their own definitions, where empathy, feelings, and emotions don't really play a role in the products that we create. And I think this is very similar to how, um, as humans, we evolved. Uh, again, just, just making it very, very simple is when you're born, you're born as a child. As a child, you first use your senses to form your reality, to interact with it. And then stock, uh, emotions and feelings come through. And it's, it's, it's a childhood is defined by that. And then now uh, we get to think more logically at, at, at adulthood. And I think it's vital that this natural uh, transition is followed. So in same, same thing is happening as we're developing uh, devices that are powered by hardware and software, uh, with hardware being the senses and soft um, uh, coming to consciousness. But it's a little flawed because I think we're creating, we're creating from an era of logic giving its senses, and then telling it how it should use this logic 
to have a feeling, to have an emotion. So I think it's important that we infuse that renaissance back into technology, philosophy back into logic, and intuition back um, into a age of reason. And this is very important because I think through this process, we create a sense of trust. So what I mean by that is that me standing here, I know that if I touch you, I know that you know what touch is. I know that I know that you know that I know what touch is. <laughs> and I know that I know that you know that I know that you know what touch is. So it creates this trust where whatever I'm saying, in a way, will get interpreted and we can understand each other. But I think it's better I don't talk about it and we should feel it. So this creates this feeling uh, that I'm sure many of you felt. And now talking about it, I'm talking about the feeling. But at the moment, I know that all of us were feeling it. So there's, there's, there's like no sensation of sense that defines sensation. So now talking about it, I'm defining it. But at the moment, we felt it. And this created this, this trust that Whatever I'm talking here, whatever I'm, this concept that I'm trying to pass on through our senses, through our feelings, it gets, uh, it gets taken in. So it's, it's in a way similar. So this is intraspecies trust. And interspecies trust is kind of tough. Like imagine interacting with a dog. You have no idea what the dog is feeling. You can assume what it's feeling when you pet it because you liken it to your own senses, to your own sense feelings. And there's one way where we can get a little cheap access into thinking of how it's feeling when we feed the dog. Because I know that it feels good to eat. So must the animal. So it's very, very, this, this like, these two consciousnesses living next to each other, not understanding how they feel. So I think it's very important that we create this layer between human senses and machine senses that how much ever the machine intelligence evolves, we know at some le level there's a feeling transfer. And it's kind of similar to like classical algorithmic digital computing, like how, how it works is, how, how the programming language works is, I have an idea of a, of at a very high level. Then I, again, this is from a logic era, I break it down into words, break it down into letters, I use my keyboard, create a, type up a logical function, an algorithm that there's a layer between the hardware and this high-level software that interpret this and compiles it down to machine language, right? the zeros and ones assembly language. And then the same thing happens backwards. So it's in, in this very similar way, I think we have to create this same layer between human senses and machine senses. But 
it's a bit, it's, it's missing, it's missing something. Because we're creating from this era defined by breaking everything down into specifics and forgetting the whole. So the letters that I'm using for, to form the words, the word itself is telling the word how it should feel, how I should feel when I'm reading it. I think we have to go a level deeper and try to re redefine how, what the building blocks are for building new, this new type of consciousness. And those building blocks, these concepts, building with concepts, should have empathy built in, or, or the ability for those parts to create their own empathy. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, I think, maybe, I don't know, uh, is a, like a highly complex uh, system of uh, symbols and geometric constructs that, are, that both define and manipulate the behavior of the device. Again, very, very crudely analogous to the um, computer programming language, but without the need for the compilation and implementation phase. Like, it's kind of similar to, imagine this symbol tells this existence that you are a wood, and you are a wooden block now. So it gives the, the material meaning. It gives it an ability to define its own self. And it's, it's more than vital at this point in time, because there's this one, one, one story I like to share is, during the Soviet Union, during the Cold War, um, uh, there was this guy, Stanislav Petrov, who was monitoring the uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, he, he was monitoring uh, launch cycles. So there was an incident where on the, on the screen, a few missiles started showing up coming from the United States. And all logic, all tech told that this is, this is, this is what's happening. Checked, double checked, this is what's happening. He used his, the moment of the presence, he used his feelings, he used his empathy, his humanness to not do anything. And obviously, being in the Soviet area, they penalized him for not writing it down in detail. And his answer was, uh, one hand I was on the phone, one hand on the trigger, and I don't have a third hand. So, but machines will. And I don't want to say this to uh, rise this, uh, like being afraid of it or being scared of it. I think it's very beautiful. We're at a very, very beautiful time where if we get this right, we have a second chance at humanity. We can help ourselves. We can help our mother, our earth, and move forward together as friends. Thank you.